hello everyone welcome back to our channel in the previous video we have seen the boundaries of the thorax thoracic inlet and thoracic outlet now we will see in this video contents of the inlet of the thorax and the structures passing through the outlet of the thorax those who have not seen the boundaries of the inlet of the thorax first see that video then it will be easier for you those who have not subscribed to the channel do subscribe now keep watching the videos now we will quickly revise the boundaries of the inlet of the thorax the inlet of the thorax is the narrow aperture through which upper part of the thorax communicates with the root of the neck now we will see the boundaries even though bones are not given we will assume the bones are given here so this is the manubrium sterni so the in front boundary is the upper border of the manubrium sterni behind upper border of the first thoracic vertebra on each side first rib and its costal cartilage so this is the first rib and its cartilage attached to the manubrium and to the first thoracic vertebra so these forms the boundaries of the inlet of the thorax which is kidney shape so that this transverse diameter is 10 to 12.5 cm and its antero posterior diameter is 4 to 5 cm so this inlet of the thorax is separated from the root of the neck by a triangular fascia that is the sibsens fascia which is now attached to the tip of the transverse process of the cervical vertebra and to the inner border of the first rib so this sibsens fascia separates the apex of the lung from the root of the neck so that it is not puffed up and down during respiration the suprapleural membrane is related to the subclavian vessels on each side so the sibsens fascia or suprapleural membrane may be asked as very short notes for you now we will see the structures passing through the inlet of the thorax so if this is the inlet of the thorax now you can understand and appreciate what are the structures passing through the inlet of the thorax so we can take the structures as viscera vessels then nerves viscera if you see first this is the trachea in the midline and the esophagus also so this is the esophagus trachea esophagus and apex of both the lungs so this apex of both the lungs and also the remains of thymus of superior mediastinum may project in the inlet of thorax so here the remains of thymus in the superior mediastinum may project so these are the viscera passing through the apex of the lung passing through the inlet of thorax now the vessels we will see on the right side brachiocephalic trunk so this is the brachiocephalic trunk on the right side on the left side this is left common carotid and left subclavian artery so they pass through the inlet of the thorax right and left brachiocephalic vein so this is right brachiocephalic vein and left brachiocephalic vein smaller vessels which pass through this they are the branches of subclavian vessels so here we have seen the intercostal sp spaces are supplied by internal thoracic artery which is a branch of subclavian artery so here this in like this the internal thoracic artery will arise from this subclavian artery and pass through the inlet of thorax to uh, form the anterior intercostal vessels and right and left superior intercostal arteries they are also the branches of costo cervical trunk of the subclavian artery right and left posterior intercostal veins and inferior thyroid veins the inferior here will be the thyroid gland will be situated the inferior thyroid veins will drain into brachiocephalic veins so they will pass through the inlet of thorax nerves which pass through the outlet of the inlet of the thorax are the right and left phrenic nerves so right and left phrenic nerves will be the nerves for the diaphragm they will be passing through the inlet of thorax related to the medial surface of the lung 
right and left vagus nerves so this vagus nerve is ninth cranial nerve which will pass through the thorax enter the abdomen and supply the major part of the git so right and left vagus nerves right and left sympathetic trunks close to the vertebra and right and left first thoracic nerves so this right and left first thoracic nerves they cross pass across the ascend across the first rib to form the brachial plexus so these are the nerves muscles also form some structures of the inlet of the thorax so if this is the manubrium sternae muscle attached to the manubrium sternae will be the strap muscles of the front of the neck sternohyoid sternothyroid and in the behind longus coli muscles they will be also forming the structures passing through the inlet of the thorax so the these are the structures passing through the inlet of thorax we have seen elaborately if you see the applied anatomy of this thoracic inlet thoracic inlet syndrome two structures arch over the first rib they are the so these are the subclavian artery and first thoracic nerve they may be pulled or pressed by a cervical rib therefore the symptoms may be compression of this arteries or nerves or both so that is called thoracic inlet syndrome now we will see the outlet of the thorax yes this is the inferior aperture is the broad end of the thorax which is separated from the abdominal cavity that is the by a diaphragm we have seen the boundaries of the outlet of thorax in the previous video again boundaries we will revise anteriorly infrasternal angle anteriorly infrasternal angle between the two costal margins posteriorly inferior surface of the body of the 12th thoracic vertebra on each side will be the costal margin so here is the two costal margins formed by the lower ribs so that inferior infrasternal angle between the two costal margins will be the and the costal margins on on the posterior side 12th thoracic vertebra this outlet is closed by a large musculotendinous diaphragm partition called diaphragm thoraco abdominal diaphragm which separates the thorax and the abdomen if you see this abdo uh, thoracic outlet or the diaphragm does so this is the thoracic outlet or the diaphragm which has many openings large openings and small openings inferior vena cava opening this is the inferior vena cava opening we one more opening is the esophageal opening esophageal opening and the aortic opening then there are many small openings in the diaphragm also diaphragm as such will be the essay for you which will be dealt in the separate video so these are the major openings in the diaphragm we have seen briefly we have completed this video of thoracic inlet and thoracic outlet with the next topic in the thorax we will see in the next video those who have not subscribed to the channel do subscribe now keep watching the videos thank you